I'd like to welcome you to tonight's Google Hangout on Air, a live broadcast here on Google Hangouts and also on YouTube, where we're going to be demonstrating the Zing electronic cutting machine and make the cut software. If you look down down below in your little window down here, I'm joined by Tammy Malone, who's just delightful to work with, and she has shown me a great deal about Google Hangouts, and she's here tonight if something goes wrong. So we'll see how well this works. Hopefully this is coming out for folks over on the YouTube channel. I'm gonna, if you are watching on YouTube, uh, that's great. It means you were able to connect up. You're going to want to be sure to hit refresh and the play button over there so that you can see what's going on. And if you want to leave comments, you can leave comments over there on YouTube and they should stream so you should see them okay. Um, I'm going to just pop over there and see what's coming out over on YouTube if it has started to broadcast. And so I do see we are live on YouTube, which is great. So again, my name is Joe Rotel. I want to welcome you this evening. It's just about 9 o'clock Eastern time, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Tonight's going to be a little bit different than the classes you participated in with Terry. Terry is celebrating her anniversary today, and although she's not supposed to be on the internet, we did see some posts from her, so she's sneaking some posts over there. Mm -hmm. Terry is usually teaching you a, a technique right on a project and you're working on a project but we can't really do that with a cutting machine so tonight's going to be a little mix of demonstration of the software that drives the cutting machine as well as the machine itself and I'll probably jump back and forth between the two I've got some PowerPoint slides that I can share as well all of this is right now available on the front page of my website which is right under my name below here um, I have to get my left and right right, createandcraft.com. So if you go right to that front page, you can download a link for any of the slides that I use tonight in the PowerPoint. I've also got a couple of handouts there for the Zing. So <clears throat> you're welcome to go there to collect those as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview here before we jump out onto the actual software. So let me jump over here to some slides that I put together. These slides were used at CHA this January. So um, I'm going to shrink it down so I can see here what's going on in the same place as you guys. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Zing, a little bit about me. This is not what I do as a full-time job. So for my real job, I'm CTO of a software company that specializes in human resources and payroll software. And the other half, my half, specializes in internet marketing. And we're just about to launch a brand new e-commerce site, a store platform for members at CHA at a, at a super discount. It's a combination website, blog, and e-commerce site. <clears throat> so if you're interested in that, just ping me. Um, I've been real fortunate to be published in a few magazines, and I filmed some Scrapbook Soup episodes. I'm filming some more on June 5th. And I've done spot crafting at the Spotted Canary with Joy. I have a chipboard line with Want to Scrap, and I think there's some Want to Scrap folks out there watching too. And I've been on a few design teams, so I've been real, real, real fortunate. <clears throat> Tonight what we'll talk a little bit about is the machine itself. And there I really want to focus on how it's constructed, how much space it's going to take up in your craft room, how much, how portable is it? Because some of the machines actually claim to be portable, but I would say they're luggable. Um, this one's actually portable, how much noise it makes. <clears throat> then I want to talk a little bit about what materials it can cut, because I think that also is a big differentiator for the Zing. How big you can cut, the size of materials, the speed, what the software features, and then a little bit about warranty, how we have a community of folks who are using it and the price point. <clears throat> so let's start. I'll give you some facts and then I'm going to switch cameras and show you the machine. It's 95% metal, which means it's not that easy to break. There's just a few parts that are plastic. And it's very compact. It's only about 5 inches tall, 6 inches deep, and about 2 foot wide. Um, <clears throat> so it's very quiet, about 60, 70 decibels. It comes with a two-prong cord that works here in the U.S. and Canada. There's Cords also available if you're in Australia, the UK, or South Africa. <clears throat> it's made by AccuGraphics. They have 30 years in the business, and they're known for making giant machines for sign companies. Um, and now they've turned it to this small home machine. The names you'll hear there are Gary, Heather, and Chad. And notice they're all young, but that's one family. So it's definitely a family-owned business. They're all down in Florida. 
<clears throat> so here's a little shot that I'll just put up for a second that shows the machine here with everything clearly labeled. But let me jump over to my camera and try to give you a little bit of a personal tour. So I'm going to jump over here and switch cameras. If this doesn't work, this is where we'll be diving in to call. <laughs> Ask Tammy what's going on. There, it looks like it's okay. Are we good, Tammy? <clears throat> so there's the actual yes. machine. Now, I've got a camera here that's in a coffee mug, so it's not the most stable environment. But you can see the machine itself. I'm going to get up there and walk over to it. <clears throat> the machine itself is just about two foot long. And like we said, it's only about <clears throat> four inches high, five inches high, and it's only about six inches deep. So it's not a very big machine at all. The only part you really have to worry about is this big on-off button right here. There's really nothing else to do on the machine itself. The back of the machine, <clears throat> let's see if I can rotate it. <clears throat> the back of the machine has got cables. One is your power cable and one is a USB cable. That's how you connect it to your computer. Everything you do with the Zing is really driven by your computer. <clears throat> Some of the other things to notice, this is the blade and the blade will travel, let me turn it off here, the blade travels back and forth as it's doing its cutting and this is where the blade sits. It's actually in this little holder right here and you'll see a lever here and there's one over here as well. That lever lifts this bar we call it the press bar, and that is where you put your mat or your vinyl, then you close the levers, the bar goes down and holds it in place. That's the whole machine. Now one of the cool things about the machine is the materials that you can fit, how big this opening is, is 17 inches wide, and the blade travels 14 inches. You can see, right, it can't go all the way to the end because it hit that block. So you've got a 14 inch cutting area, which means if you're using 12 by 12 scrapbook paper, you can go right to the edge, off the edge even. <clears throat> Some of the other machines, although they fit 12 by 12, they only cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So this cuts 14 inches wide, the material can be 17 inches wide, and the big key, unlimited lengths. So if you've got vinyl, you can put vinyl on a roll, set the roll behind the machine, and just feed the vinyl through nonstop. <clears throat> so that's a little bit there about the machine itself. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. You know that has to happen, right, as soon as you do something like this. So that's a little bit about that machine itself. Now, the machine is, of course, cool, but there's not a ton for us to say demo when it comes to the machine with the camera. You don't want to sit and actually watch that machine cut. I'm going to show you a cut, though, I promise. The magic behind the whole process here is really make the cut software. That's the software that drives the Zing. It drives a lot of other cutting machines as well. So you'll see make the cut used with several machines. It's the software that allows you to join shapes together, split things apart, cut any font that you have on my, your machine, um, create shadows. I'm going to show you examples of all this. Import shapes <clears throat> in other formats, trace pixel images, um, and then it's got some little odd quirky features that are fun. I mean, you can do a jigsaw, you can do a conical wrap. That's how you make cupcake wrappers, right? The little cone shape. And my favorite feature is print and cut. So print and cut really lets you uh, cut anything out you'd like. Let me show you an example of what I did print and cut. And I'm going to go ahead and change cameras here. So I did these just before the show started. I don't know if you can see that koi fish. And can you see the cutouts in all the little spots behind the koi? So if you were to print this out, <clears throat> you'd have to cut it by hand. Now even down here, this all cut out with a craft knife. And actually some of these little tiny shapes, this one right down here, is very difficult to cut um, with a craft knife. The zinc cut all that out. Um, I printed this little fairy. And it cut out not only the fairy, but if you look really close, even between the little piece of the wing, and even that little, little tiny dot down here um, inside the leaves. So you can get some pretty elaborate cuts. This is actually my favorite. 
This is a rubber stamp from Judykins, and it's one of my favorite stamps. <clears throat> it's the Art Deco Mermaid, and it's kind of hard to see it on camera, but if you look up here at her hair, it actually cut the strands of her hair. I don't know if you can see how fine those strands are. So that's a little bit about the detail that you can cut with the Zing. And I promise I am going to show you um, some cutting. I just want to make sure we understand some of the basics first. Because it's driven by software, there's nothing extra to purchase. You don't need cartridges or anything. You don't have to purchase design files either. You can if you like, but you can also do your own. You can draw them digitally or do them on paper and then scan and trace them. Um, for your own personal use, of course, you could find stuff on the web and use that. Um, you want to be careful there in terms of using stuff off the web. Um, if, watch the copyright, that kind of stuff. So let's actually take a look at what the Zing can do. Let's actually cut something as an example. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up Make the Cut software so you can see what that's like. And let me go ahead and share that screen. So there's Make the Cut. And I'll give you a little bit of a tour here. Let me set it up so that it kind of looks like how you'd start. <clears throat> One of the things you'll see right off the bat is a representation of a mat. So this is a 12 by 12 mat. If you're using other cutting machines that use mats, you'll be familiar with this. Of course, the Zing, you can set your own mat sizes. So sometimes when I'm working with letters, I may go ahead and say, well, my mat is really 8.5 by 11. Um, in this case, I'll work with something 12 by 12, no worries at all, so I'll just set it to 12 by 12. The Zing mat is this light blue color, but if you've got mats from another machine, you can use those as well. Just change the color so it looks exactly that way. Now, you'll see the little arrow at the top here, the way the mat is facing. I set it up portrait. I like to work portrait because to me that's just the logical direction that the mat would go in the machine. But if you're more comfortable working landscape, you can do that as well. So I tend to work portrait. And when I screw things up, it's because I've set it to landscape by accident, and yet my brain always thinks portrait. So what's some of the things we can do here? Let's start with something as easy as text. I'll make the mat a little bit bigger. And I'm going to click on text and fonts. There, that's a good size for the mat. We'll click on text and fonts. <clears throat> One of the things you'll notice, I'm sure it's a little tough to read over there, but this has every font that's loaded on my machine that I can pick from. And I'm kind of a font junkie, so I probably have 800 fonts or more on this machine. Some of them cut very well. Some of them wouldn't cut well because they're very uh, lacy dots, that kind of thing, but it means they work great with a pen. We don't have to just put a blade in our machine. We can put a pen as well. But I'll choose a nice, thick, chunky font. Um, they're Arial Black. And I'm going to click on the little font window, and then I get to put in my words. Um, Hello, Terry. You could see I was playing with Terry's Prowl um, on a test just last night. So I had that up there. But let's see. Let's put uh, a great a big word up there. How about Summer Fun? And I'll go ahead and hit Accept. And there's my word. And it's exactly, exactly how I see it on the mat is how it's going to cut. So each one of these little boxes on the mat are one inch. That means this summer fun, if I stick it in here, kind of line it up, it's just about an inch tall. But I can make it bigger for sure. I can grab it and resize it. And that's resizing it proportionately when I grab the corner like that. I could also resize it and not maintain that aspect ratio. If I want tall and thin letters, I can do that as well. If I don't want the word fun next to this, I can move the word fun down here. But this is going to cut exactly the way that we see it. And if I go ahead and click the magnifying glass, it'll show me exactly what that cut will look like. And in this case, we're going to end up with all these separate letters, summer fun. So if we counted that six, seven, eight, nine letters, and if I go ahead and put that on the mat, that's exactly how it would cut would be those nine letters. But one of the things folks generally want to do is glue these things together. They don't want to have all these separate letters. So I can just drag the letters 
and make them overlap. And I don't have to make them line up right at the bottom. We're, we're creative folks. We can move this stuff around. So I can put the word summer like that and the word fun. Maybe I'll put down here like this. Now you never have to waste paper. You can always just hit the magnifying glass to see what'll cut. Now let me zoom in here on the mat so that you can see a little bit of that detail when we zoom in. Notice when I cut with the magnifying glass, do you see where the letters overlap, like between the S and the U and the M and the U? The blade is gonna follow this exact shape of the S and that part is gonna cut into that letter U. And then the U is going to cut into the letter S, and that little piece in the middle is going to fall out. And that's what you see here. You see all the white pieces between all those things. Well, I can grab all these letters, just sweep them out with the mouse. Or if I don't want to, I'll use Control-A just to select everything. And down at the bottom here, I can say Weld. And what Weld does, see the difference? Now, the overlapping parts have been welded together. And this actually cuts as one single shape, one single element. And that's pretty cool, but we don't have to just stick with letters, right? We could do some other fun things as well. It comes with some built-in shapes. These are not very exciting. I tend to use them to make other things. Um, you can see what some of these things look like. Again, not super fun shapes. They're okay. And there, there's a sun right there. You can always make your own kinds of shapes from these basic shapes, right? That sun is really triangles and a circle in the middle, things like that. But let's go ahead and take, uh, I don't know, we'll put a star. So I'm going to grab that star shape and double click and put it on the mat. And of course, that summer fun, that star is separate now too, right? It's not welded as part of everything else. It's just its own little thing, and I can resize it. But if I want to put that star attached to the word fun, I just have to make sure that it's touching a little bit, overlapping a little bit. Grab the word fun and that, hit weld, and now they're glued together. So let's see what it's like to actually cut this thing. I'm going to switch cameras. Let's see if that camera works. So you're back to me. So I've got the mat here. And you can see that my mat is pretty beat up. This is really torn up. I use this all the time. It comes with one mat. And you don't have to, when you're done with, they lose the stickiness. Don't throw it away. Just make it sticky again. A couple of options. Just put blue tape around the border and then spray it with repositionable adhesive. I don't like to do that because in the winter, especially, I do it inside. I get repositional adhesive on the walls, and it's a giant mess. So instead, you can use the Zig Pen, you know, those one-inch blue pens, and just run the Zig Pen down every column, let it dry, and now you've made it repositionable. And I have several mats and they're all at different levels of stickiness because if it's super super sticky it works great with chipboard but if it's not so sticky it's really nice if I'm cutting something as fine as oh handmade uh, Japanese papers or tissue paper so I actually like to have different levels of stickiness so I'm going to take my mat and I'm just going to stick on a piece of paper big enough for our summer fun So let's see if I can move my mug and get this camera working over there. Wait a sec, let's try that camera. You know, it's trickier to switch the cameras than you think. Tammy will back on this. So there, I've got my mug now aimed at the mat. And all I'm doing is putting a piece of paper on the mat. And I suggest that you use a brayer to really get this adhered to the mat. And now we've got to stick it in the zing. So let's get this aimed here back at the zing. I'm going to come over here, turn it on. And if you look at where I put the paper on the mat, in this case, it doesn't matter at all. I just stuck it anywhere I could on the mat. I'm going to lower the two levers. 
I think they're down already. And then slide the mat in. Now, folks aren't used to this if you worked with a cricket. Normally, you start the mat and say, load mat, and zoom, it goes in. The same, you load it yourself. And I like to use the lines on the mat and line those lines up with the edge of the machine just to get it straight. That's just my personal preference. So I've got a piece of paper in the mat, in the mat, on the mat, it's loaded in the machine. The machine is on. So let's go and switch again over to the software and see how we actually cut. So here we go. There's my summer fun and we can see it on the mat. I'm going to click on the little scissors and the zing then wakes up. You probably can hear it in the background. Now you have several options here. The first thing we have is the cut speed. This is how fast the blade's going to travel. It goes up to 20, but I tend to feel really good with it around 10. For some reason, I never cut at 20. My friend Carol puts everything through at 20. She likes at high speed. The neat thing about the Zing, though, is there's a cut speed and an up speed. That means you can have one speed when the blade is down cutting, but a higher speed when the blade is traveling, say, between the things it's cutting. And sometimes if you've got a piece that has a lot of open space, the blade spends a lot of time traveling. This can save you a lot of that time. Now we've got the force. It goes up to 160. You can decide how much pressure you need based on the material. You can also cut over the same material several times. I do that sometimes with really thick chipboard. And we have three options. Knife point, what you see is what you get, and print and cut. And what I'm going to show you here is knife point. So knife point, we actually say to tell the machine, we're telling the machine, I'm going to place the blade point, the knife point, in the lower right of where I want you to start cutting and the zing takes care of all the rest so we go ahead and click blade origin and you can see the little arrows here right that's gonna move the blade now the nice thing is the new version of the software comes with the machine this is voice activated so you can actually just sit and yell at your zing <laughs> and say left right 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 up left and the blade will move but I don't have the newest version loaded on this machine. This is an older test version. So what I'm doing is moving, using my arrows to actually move. And I don't want to cut right in the middle of my page. Remember what we said is this is going to cut exactly where that blade is sitting will be the lower right of summer fun. So when I hit finished, here we go. Now I, that's set the blade origin. Now I can hit cut. And, and this is about half speed. Full speed cuts at about 24 inches per second. So it almost has the word summer done. It's doing the top half of the letters. And now it'll probably jump down. Finishing the S. Sometimes I'm fascinated just watching it cut, to be honest. Now it's doing the word fun. F U, the bottom of the N, the outside edge of the star, right across the top. And we're all done. So what I'll do is take the mat out. Remember, we're going to use our two levers. And I think you can probably, yeah, maybe you can see that outline on the camera. Some are fun. Let's see what happens when I peel the paper off. And there we did it. So there's our summer fun. All cut out, all welded together. And we can just peel that right off the mat. So I tend to use little pokey tools or whatever I can just to get my words off. There's that word summer. And there's our word fun. And hopefully you can get an idea of how fine the points are behind that star, right? So there's summer fun. That was just an example of cutting something really simple. 
uh, cutting a piece of text, uh, any font that you choose on the machine. So, believe it or not, that's thing lots and lots of folks um, do is they just want to cut letters and they want to cut titles and things like that. And that's cool, but we can cut a lot more than that as well. Let's see if I can change my camera. What happens is I go from camera to no camera, and the cameras have the same name, so that's part of the problem. I have to figure out how to rename my cameras. Uh, let's see. Let's jump to the. There we go. So some folks just actually like cutting all those kinds of titles and stuff. That's great. Um, but of course, you can do so much more. And one of the things that folks really like to do is take an image they find on the web, like I did with this fish, the koi, and cut it out. Right? And so again, I want you to be aware of copyrights, but I want to show you the process on how we do that. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to switch back here. We're going to take a little lesson in images. So let's talk a little bit about digital images. There are two basic types of graphic files, raster images and vector images. Raster images are made up of tiny little dots, pixels of color. So if you look at that photograph of that mountain, that gorgeous mountain, if we zoomed in on it a lot, that's actually what you'd see are all those little dots of color. It's basically a rectangular arrangement of those dots. And they typically end in GIF, graphics interchange format, JPEG, TIFF, or BMP. This is typically the kinds of images you would get from a digital camera or a scanner. Vector images are completely different, though. Vector images are graphics that are drawn with shapes and lines. The main difference between the two is that vector images can be resized and they maintain their integrity, right? If we say to the computer, draw a circle, no matter how big or small we make it, the circle will always be smooth. But if we had uh, circles that were made out of all those little pixels, dots of colors, then, and you resized it, you'd end up with all that jagged edge. That's why we tell folks some photos you just can't resize to that amount. So raster images are the most common, bitmap, Im bitmap images. Remember, they're made up of dots or pixels photographs, things from a scanner, typically the things you'd find on the web. The problem is an electronic cutter has to follow a path. I like to think of it as an ice skater. If you were to throw down a giant symbol projected on the ice rink and tell an ice skater to cut that out, she would not be jumping around cutting all these tiny little dots, right? She'd look down at the image and kind of follow it and trace around it, and that's how she would skate, for example, a mountain. Luckily, Make the Cut has the capability of taking one of these pixel or raster images and turning it into a vector image. Now keep in mind, the more complicated the image, the more the skater would have to turn and twist and turn. Every time there's a twist and turn, that's what the little dot is on the rabbit. So let's go ahead and see what it's like to work with these images. Remember, as a cutting machine, in order to use a raster image, we have to convert it to a path. And some things are more suitable than others. Silhouettes work great. Coloring book images work great. Um, stained glass patterns work great um, because they, they have a natural outline that you can tend to follow. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up a browser window. And let me go ahead and share my browser window. So I tend to use Google all the time. And let's say, for example, we wanted a, I don't know, I always struggle with things to think of. Um, the thing that I used to use all the time when I give demos is the mushroom house. So I'm going to say, and if, if I just say mushroom house by itself, and I click on images, you see all the beautiful photos. They're certainly very cool mushroom houses but it's definitely not something a blade could cut out of paper. But if I go ahead and add Mushroom House coloring page, then I might get a Mushroom House that actually is practical for us to cut out of paper. And the one that I typically use is like this one up here. Let's see what that looks like. I'll go ahead and view the original image. Oh, all this is still, I'm still in 
Google. I'm still searching for images in Google. Um, this one looks good. That little grass is a little bit tricky. We could try to get rid of it. Um, we could do that in a paint program or we could do it right and make the cut. Let me just go ahead and save this image. So now I have it on my computer. And now I'm going to go in and let's go back into make the cut and see what happens when we actually use that image in make the cut. So there's our make the cut. And I'm just going to grab all this summer fun and hit delete. I'm going to go up here and use Pixel Trace. If I grab those pixels, there's the mushroom house, and I hit open. You can see Make the Cut is trying to figure out how to trace this image. And sometimes you do better than other times, right? This setting over here is like settings on a copy machine. If you lower it, some of your image will probably drop out. Let me make it really low just so we can see what we get. See how we're starting to lose parts of the door and parts around the edge of the mushroom? If you make it really high, it's like setting the brightness on your copy machine to really dark. And you know when you do that, how you get all the gray fuzzies around your image? So basically, you just kind of play until you get a number that you're comfortable with. And in this case, let's see. What number do we actually want? Uh... I picked a number here. Let's see how it did. Ah, it did pretty well, see? So there's my mushroom house. Now, I certainly could cut this. Of course, if I do that, look what I'm going to get, all, all these separate little shapes. It would certainly be nice to cut these in separate colors. So I can go ahead and tell Make the Cut to break this apart. And now it's actually made separate pieces. So here I have the outline, the silhouette, if you will. And then down here, I have all these other pieces, again, that I could use individual parts. I could, maybe I want to cut all these little pieces of the mushroom in one color and maybe cut the cap in another color, maybe cut the base in a color, the little transom of the doorway. So you see how this can break all of these things up. Now, this little piece on the door is so tiny, it's not worth doing. I could just delete it. I could do the same here with this piece of the doorway. Even the doorknob, I probably am not going to try to cut that. So I might take this thing and break it up even more. Break it up is like a sledgehammer. Tears apart these images. So every time I click it, it's going to break it up again and again and again. Where I can then cut all those little dots. Notice this little dot ended up having two of them. It's because the crayon, the line in the coloring book was so thick, it traced the inside of the line and the outside of the line. So here I could certainly lay this out on the mat, try to figure out a way to get all this on the mat and fit. I could certainly put it on separate mats. You don't want to resize these things after you break it up. That's some, a mistake that I see a lot of people make. I could rotate it. Maybe that would fit it on the mat a little better. Let's try that. Let me stick him down there. We could put all the door pieces kind of together. Oh, I don't have room for this piece, but that's okay. I could cut him separate later on. Now, I could put paper on the mat in these areas. One, two, three, four, four different colors of paper. Tell the zing I've got that 12 by 12 mat, and it would actually cut them out of all those different colors. So you got that process, right? Let me go, go ahead and get it all. Let's look at something, though a little bit more exciting than just cutting out colored pieces of paper. Let's actually cut a colored image and fussy cut all the way around it. And the one I'm going to show you is, let's say, this koi. I love this koi that I found on the web. So I'm going to say, let's cut out this koi. And if I just say, cut it out, what I would get on the mat, see over here, what I get on the mat is just the big koi. But it's not filled in with any color. It's certainly not pretty. So what I'm going to do is delete that. What I want to do here is say, yeah, I want to work with this koi. But click the word texturize. And what texturize does is it actually brings over the colors of the koi onto the mat. So you can see how that's working out, right? 
see how we have exactly those colors and the nice thing is once it's on the mat I could resize this and I could cut it quite large I could cut it much smaller um, totally 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 up to me and that's the the nice thing about make the cut is that I can go ahead and say hey I want this to be who knows what size so we're gonna print this and we're gonna tell the zing to cut exactly around what has printed now remember this is just demo wise it's not meant to be a lesson so it's it's a little hard I know to keep up with all this but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna make them a little smaller I've set it to eight and a half by eleven we'll zoom in a bit the Zing has a nice feature here in Make the Cut where I can say, show me what my paper is like and show me registration marks. So do, do you see here the green outline is the outline of 8.5 by 11 sheet. You can see how big it is. And if you look really closely in the four corners, you see these four tiny, tiny little dots. What I'm going to do now is say print. And I'm going to send this to my color printer that's on the other side of the room and I put paper in the rear, rear tray so I'm going to go ahead and I put in glossy paper I think doesn't really matter so we're going to go ahead and hit print and then I'll walk over there and show you what that printout is like hopefully you're getting an idea here of what it's like to actually put that image on the mat I just love love the quality here of that little koi I found her today and I was just amazed by how pretty it was. So the printer's running. I'm going to go run over and get a printout. And while I'm gone, Tammy is now going to sing and dance. She has not rehearsed her number yet, but this was her big chance to sing and dance live on Google Hangouts on Air. Ready, Tammy? Go. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Keep singing. It's still printing. <laughs> it's still printing. Maybe I should have printed something a little smaller. Be right back. <laughs> At least you know it's live and not fake. I got the print out. I got the print out. So here we just printed the koi. And I think you can see down in the corners if I could work my fingers see the little black dot see that little black dot those are the registration marks that the laser on the zing is going to use to line up so that it cuts this precise if you're very careful with your laser alignment you won't see any white at all around the edges of this koi so I'm gonna switch cameras here that seems to be the hardest thing I have to do for the whole for the whole for the show is launch cameras to me. So I've got my mat. You're gonna see it sideways. I'm just gonna put this on the mat. Doesn't matter where I put it. Remember we said use a prayer. Now we're gonna go over here and put this paper in the zing. I think everybody remembers how. The levers are open, the mat slides in, and I always just line stuff up with the blue lines. So that's in there. Now we have to tell the software that it's time to cut. And so I want to show you that's a little bit different than what we've seen so far. Again, I know you're never going to learn all this, but I just want you to see the options. When I hit cut, I have an option down here now that says print and cut. And that's just what we did, right? We printed something out through Make the Cut, and now we want to cut it. First thing we need to do, again, is set the blade origin. But it's a little bit different this time. I'm going to go ahead and jump back to the camera so you can see it. Let's see how I get back to my camera part. Turn off screen share. There you go. So I'm going to line up, but in this case, 
I'm not lining up the knife point. I'm lining up a laser. And it's, I'm going to do my best here to hold, hold the camera and show you the laser alignment at the same time. Let's see if I can do that. So I've got a, I can't really tell where, where the camera is. Let me move the mouse. Let me see what I can see. See that little red dot? That little tiny dot, that's the laser light that we're trying to align to. And I can go ahead now and move the knife, the head there, with my arrows. As soon as it touches the paper, see that? And I'm going to line it up right on the very corner. And then click finished. And now, when I hit cut project, I want to show you this, so I want to switch back over here to the Hangout. This is when I really need multiple hands. Several hands is trickier than you think. So here, when I say cut project, look what happens. It actually gives me an image, the outline of that koi, and it's showing me where I need to put the three la lasers. So again, I'm going to go ahead and get out of the software and watch. let me show you how that's aligned. See how that laser dot, it's close. It can almost find it, but not quite. So I need to just move the laser so that it's a hair over there. And let me just, i got to sit up. And I'm moving it with the arrows. I'm moving the paper. And now, do you see how that laser disappeared? When I click Next, the laser is going to jump to the next dot. And you can see how close it's getting. Right? I barely had to move at that time. And then the third one should be really close. There we go. And now when we hit finished, it'll start to cut. So it's what it's going to do is align itself. And now it's cutting inside all the little pieces of that koi. And remember, I have it set on half speed, so this is only half as fast as it can go. I don't know why I never cut full speed. Full speed always just makes me nervous. So we're going to let this cook for just a sec couple seconds more. It's doing all the interior work first. You can see the little tiny spaces. And now we're headed around the big outline, even those whiskers. All the way around the edge. And we're done. So let me put my camera back in the coffee mug. I know quality-wise you're thinking, this looks production studio quality. I know, I know. There we go. There it is, off the mat. Let's peel this piece off. There's our koi. Not just the outline, though. See all these little pieces in here? When we peel this off, it leaves all those tiny pieces on the mat. And our koi is just about perfect. And I'm going to come and switch over here to my other camera. Hardest thing to do, switching cameras. Terry Sproul deserves a medal. And every time I think I've switched to the right one, I haven't. <laughs> there we go. Much so there's our koi. And I wish you could see really close there is barely a hair of white showing around those whiskers. And to give you an idea of the whiskers, look at it against the tip of my finger. That'll tell you how big that whisker is. And it even did all these interior holes. 
So to me, that's the amazing part of the Zing, is the precision and this laser alignment of anything, not just things that you buy somewhere, but of absolutely anything. So let me show you a little bit more in the 15 minutes we have left. So we talked about tracing. You can even break up those pieces and do them in special colors. There's how I did that mushroom house. Everything there is cut in different colors. But because you can cut so many materials, where you see this turquoise and the copper, that's actually cut out of Cut Bond Create from US ArtQuest, double-sided sticky paper. And I put mica on a couple of them and gilding on one of them. So that's gilded and got some mica in there as well. And here's a multimedia example. I actually cut that African mask in black paper. And then on top of it, put the Cut Bond Create that I cut all out on the Zing. This was a coloring book image. And then I filled it in, peeling off layers of that double-sided sticky paper with mica and gilding. So of course you can cut more than paper, right? Cardstock, double-sided film from US ArtQuest, vinyl, fabric, thin chipboard, rhinestone rubber, craft plastic, wood veneer. It has 750 grams of force behind that blade. That's more than any other machine in its class. And then of course we talked here about the cutting width 14 inches and material width. I think it's 17, not 18. I think I made a typo there. Of course, if you want to do vinyl, put that vinyl on a roll. The machine can sit right on top of the roll rack. We sell that stand. We even have a power adapter. So if you want to make signs on the road, you can put this in the back of your car, drive up to someplace and plug in and cut them a sign. Kiss cut, you bet. That's where you just cut the cut top layer of a material. It's most commonly done with vinyl, so vinyl has a sheet on the bottom. You don't even use a mat. You just put that in the whole machine, no mat. Kiss cut the top layer of the vinyl. The paper it's on underneath acts as a mat, and I cut that sign for my sister's van, Create and Craft. That's how I cut the double-sided adhesive as well um, when I want to peel off sections and do projects like that. Here are some of the projects I've made. Um, that little nightlight with the koi and the frog, that's done with that double-sided cut bond create. Cut in little sections, kiss cut, and section by section, I peel it off, put the color I want. It's sort of like paint by numbers with mica. And then the piece on the right was a little, color, little frame that was given out by Utrecht for Columbus's, Ohio's 200th anniversary. They had a contest. You had to make a piece that depicted the birthday of Columbus, and I'm really proud to say I won first place. But I had help, right? I cheated with the Zing because check this out. That 200 Columbus, that's their official logo. I just took it off the web, put it on the Zing, cut it out of a cereal box, cut it out of double-sided adhesive, put one on top of the other, and then added mica. This art, this is a big logo downtown. It's, oh God, five, six stories high. It's several layers of cereal box that were cut out and glued together. And all these little images, the skylines, the Santa Maria ship, our botanical gardens, images from the web, print and cut, done on the Zing. And the Ohio State logo, found the logo on the web, printed it out, or cut it out in different colors, and assembled it. Details matter, so look at the precision of this kind of thing. And you can see that in my hands there, cutting that double-sided adhesive to make an owl. And I'm going to actually show you that card at the end of the show. And, of course, you can do way more than cut. Anything you can hold in your hand, you can put in the holder of the Zing. So I want to show you how that works. So now we're going to switch cameras again, if I can do the camera thing. Let's see if I get that working. And we're going to go to the Microsoft camera, if I can get it right. Oh, it's like the mouse is so slow. Oh, you got me. You're not supposed to get me. You're supposed to get the zing. But you got me. So let me go ahead and try one more time to change that camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. The camera part is the hardest part of the whole process. Or I'm going to just pick up this camera and put it in my coffee mug. That's what I'm going to do. You're going to have to be patient, roller coaster ride. 
We're going to put that camera in the mug and name it at the same. I think my poor little PC is just maxed out here, playing it on YouTube and everywhere else. Maybe if I get rid of all those windows, it'll feel a little better. There we go. Oh, yeah, definitely couldn't handle all that at the same time. Now I need to get a new PC. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to miss the camera by hand. Sorry for the confusion. And go over here to the Zing. And I'm just going to take the blade out by unscrewing this. That's what the blade holder looks like. You can see that tiny, tiny little blade maybe sticking out of the top of that holder. You never want to run your finger like this to see what the blade's doing. And instead of a blade, I'm going to put in my pen. So I got the pen in there. Now I need a piece of paper on the mat. And I still have some stickiness here, some stuff left on the mat from our our last project. So let me go ahead and scrape off all the little pieces from our koi. This is why when they do real TV shows like Scrapbook Soup, we need five of every step out. Five of every stage is what they suggest. Because, of course, bad things happen and things go wrong and you can't tell the whole TV crew, okay, hang on, I'm going to run to Michaels, I'll be back in a half an hour. So we have to have five of everything. So I've got there a mat, and I'm going to just put on a little paper. Remember, I always say use a brayer. I just like using the brayer. I think it gives me much better uh, results. So we're going to go over here, put the paper in, the mat in, put the levers down. So now I've got some paper loaded, a mat loaded with paper in there on the Zing. And we're going to switch back over here to the software. So let me get the software running here again. And share that. So there I've got some the software up and running. I don't need to see eight and a half by 11 size anymore so I can turn off all that stuff. And I can put anything I want on the mat. So we could go use a font. And there's some really cool fonts out there. Really, really gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous fonts. And you can tell I'm a font junkie, right? See all of them? <laughs> it's just terrible how many fonts I have. Uh, I wonder what parchment looks like. Let's see. Oh, parchment even has some fancy little shapes. Remember, you don't have to use a font, right? That's all letters. You could have a font of dingbats. I really like these. Let's draw one of these over here. Let's see if I can get one over there. Of course, it's not going to cooperate. Where's it going? There we go. So we got one of these kind of cool shapes. If you look kind of close, there's a lot of stuff going on inside there. I can't even tell if it's a letter. I think it's supposed to be a letter. The name of this font is Parchment. But it's pretty cool. And I've got a piece of paper on the mat with my pen. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Cut. Not Trace, hit Cut. <laughs> And I'm going to set it with knife point. I don't want to print and cut. We're actually going to draw with the pen. And let me go ahead and show you how this draws with the pen. I'll turn off the thing, move my coffee mug. So I've got to position the blade 
at where I want to start drawing this cool little shape. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to move the blade. Of course, we don't. Go ahead and say finished, and then say, let's crank up the speed. Let's go a little bit faster. If my speed dial will work. And then say cut. Now I should have tested my pen first because if we look here at the finished product, look here at that finished product, see here and here those two straight lines? That's when the pen was traveling. It didn't lift up high enough so I got a drag mark in there. So I needed to raise the pen just a hair in that holder. So I didn't test it to see how thick the paper was. But you can see how the pen worked just the same way the blade would, and I can draw just about anything. I think the coolest thing that I've ever drawn, let's see if we can switch cameras. My challenge, I have to learn better how to switch the cameras, is in this mixed media book. This is the book I used on Scrapbook Soup TV. I just want to show you some of the pages. This is an example of the Zing cutting vinyl. And you can see how fine you can cut the vinyl, which I think is just spectacular. These are owl cards. That's something else. We're not going to see that. That's that double-sided paper. Can you see that fish and the word steampunk? Now, that fish, I think, is actually a rubber stamp from Viva Las Vegas Stamps. But I wanted it a lot bigger, so I bought the stamp, stamped it once, scanned it, then I could drop it in on Make the Cut, resize it any size I want, put in a gold glitter pen, and it drew the entire fish, all those little gears, um, with the pen. I also wrote the word steampunk with the pen. The black is all cut out. We do have a piercing tool, and so I had it pierce the holes around the circle, and then I stitched it. There's a paper piecing, just like the mushroom house, but this is my Vespa scooter. And here I cut acetate for the bamboo and made my own stencil and then pushed paint through it. And the dragonfly is double-sided adhesive, kiss cut in different sections, and then the mica applied from US ArtQuest. You can cut fabric. So I made a little owl applique by cutting out some fabric. There's the mushroom house. You can shadow words, shadow any shape. So I shadowed this. She's actually print and cut from the web. So are the butterflies, just like we did the koi. Here I added some uh, product from US or from Art Glitter, Art Glitter Institute. It's real chunky. It's sort of reminds me of I don't know what do you call that stuff you eat for breakfast? <laughs> you know that cereal that's like bird seed. Uh, this is vinyl applied to acetate, and this is actual sand down at the bottom. It's double-sided adhesive. This is vellum, and I put in an embossing tool and emboss the vellum. I cut her out of paper, and I don't know if you can see on the rose how tiny the little thorn is on the rose. And behind the cutouts, this is just packing tape. So it made it sticky, and I could apply glitter. So those are some of the things I've done. Oh, this is one of my favorites. I've never seen anybody do this before on a cutting machine. That mermaid is scratch board. So I put in an engraving tool and I scratched out the mermaid out of the scratch board. And can you see how fine the swirls are? And then I put in a blade and cut out around the outside of the mermaid. So there are attachments that you can put in the zing. One of the coolest accessories, you can see my living room, is the zing travel bag. Waterproof. And it's got a little pocket in the front. That's where you keep all your goodies. 
So I want to show you here's an example. This is the embossing tool. You can see it's got a big tip on one end and a little one on the bottom. You don't have to use it though, right? Just like I put a pen in there, you could put your own embossing tool. This just holds it a lot better. The same thing here, this is the pen holder. It's hard to work with one hand. That's the pen holder. And the nice thing here is it'll keep your pen perfectly straight. But if you're going to try to put in a Copic marker, you don't even want to use this, right? Because the Copic marker is oval. So you can stick a Copic marker in your Zing and actually draw with the Copic marker. So there are several little accessories like that. This is the engraving tool. This is what I did with the scratch board. It's basically like the head of a nail. Incredibly sharp little point there. The piercing tool is very similar to that. And then I just love the bag. And the machine is light, so it is actually portable. And I do take it all over the place. Um, any place I go to work on crafts, I probably have the Zing with me because I do just about everything with it um, because I do think it truly is really amazing. So we're almost at the end of our hour. I want to wrap up here with just a couple more things. Print and cut, that's what I showed you guys. And here at CHA, I was able to give folks a free digital collage sheet from alteredpages.com. I didn't ask her about that tonight, but I'll find out about it. And there's the multimedia album I just showed you. The cool thing here, how do you learn all this stuff? Well, there is an interactive user manual that has videos for all these little uh, steps. Make the Cut webinars happen free every Tuesday night. There's a ton of YouTube videos. There's the k, &K blog. There's a Facebook group. And there's also a project gallery where people can share their projects with one another. When you need help, if you buy a Zing from me, I'm your first line of support. And then there's also a community on the web. Sandy McCauley there is the one who answers questions that get posted to the web. The machine does have a one-year warranty. And what do you get in the box? You get the machine. You get the software, which you can load on as many computers as you'd like. Um, the official version is for the PC, but we do have a Mac version that's almost ready to be released. Um, so we do give folks the beta version of that. You get one mat, you get one blade holder, the blue one that you saw, and then you get two little blades to put inside it, a regular one or a th and a thick one. Now most people don't like changing the blades, they're very tiny and sharp, so they buy multiple holders. They get a red one for the regular blade, red is regular, and a blue one for the bulky blade. So I just change those big holders. I don't have to mess with tiny little blades. You get a pen to use when you're learning and to set up the machine, the power cord, the cable, and a quick start guide. So all that comes in the box. And it's available from all sorts of folks, including me at Create and Craft. Although today our web store crashed. <laughs> what are the odds of that? And I do have a coupon if anybody wants the Zing. The retail price is $399 and $19 shipping here in the U.S. It's always shipped FedEx ground. Usually takes two days from a warehouse in Florida. But if you put in a coupon code when the site is working, which is not tonight, but I'll post on Facebook when it, it broke today. Can you believe one of my developers broke my site today? Um, then you put in the coupon code AMAZING and it's free shipping. So for $399, you get the machine, the software, the blades, the mat, cuts everything. There's no sales tax if it's over the web and you're not in Ohio or Florida. I have to charge you tax if you're in Ohio or Florida because that's where we have the warehouse. Um, two blades, the mat, the software, the machine, the cable, you're ready to go. If you need accessories, a bag if you travel, a stand if you want to cut vinyl, there's a fabric blade, so things like that. On the front page of my website, there's a blog post that has a link to a little questionnaire, and it helps you decide if you do want any accessories, but you can get them at any time. Now's just a good time because there's free shipping. So, 10.03, we're only three minutes late. I apologize for all the trouble with the cameras. And <laughs> I, it's two hands, multiple cameras, and I'm in the tiniest. You want to see my tiny little space before we go? I'm actually in, oh my God, you see my whole head, our family room. And this is my computer desk, my very messy computer desk. And the doors close like an armoire. I'm working on the little wing coming out of the desk. And I'm inside our family room. And I'm in this tiny little space. I wish I could show you how tiny 
You know, and I'm big. Look at my tiny little space off the bathroom. Look how tiny this little hole is that I'm trying to run this whole show from. And thank God Tammy connected early onto the Hangout. Because at that point in time, the camera wasn't even working. So she talked me off the ledge there. Delightful to work with. Tammy coordinates PK Glitz. Am I right, Tammy? That's PK correct. PK Glitz design team, huh? I'm the uh, sales and marketing director for uh, PK Glitz, and I also uh, work with the designers and coordinate schedules and things like that. And I'm doing a guest post for PK Glitz in June, and I think I came up with a new technique that looks really cool. It makes a Mexican tile. So I'm very excited about that. I just finished it. Tammy's been nervous because she keeps saying, how's your post? How's your post? How's your post? <laughs> <laughs> but I did get it done. I did get it done. And now I'm busy getting ready to film uh, episodes of Scrapbook Soup TV. It will be filmed June 5th. I'm doing two episodes plus two teasers. And I'm going to be working with Kaleidoscope Creator Software. And as a little tease, let me give you a little tease and show you Kaleidoscope Creator. I just can't resist it because I think it's, am I think it's just amazingly cool. So I'm going to give you a tease. If you'd like to see a little show where you're we're using kaleidoscope creator I'd be happy to give that a shot maybe I'll be better with the cameras by then let me go ahead and switch over here this is kaleidoscope creator and it could not be any easier to use you just go find a picture for example this coral reef and boom it makes a kaleidoscope can you see it up in the upper right there how fabulous is this and if you move the picture you can move it you can rotate it and you can you see that kaleidoscope changing and you don't have to just use a standard shape look at all the shapes that this thing comes with so you want to make a flower no problems you want to make a who knows what stars and scallops and flourishes and snowflakes and like look at this one down here this feathery one it's just so cool and you can just rotate, you can grab, you can resize. And then now, of course, the challenge on the TV show is once you get one of these big things, you know, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to use it on? So that's the fun, fun part here of Kaleidoscope Creator. Let me see if it's showing the big picture. It doesn't show the big picture, so let's see if we can get that. Oh, it doesn't want to show that pop-up back there. Oh, maybe if we go full screen. So there's what that big kaleidoscope looks like. You can see that sample. Look at the colors and everything, and that's the parts of the fish and the coral. You know, it's just absolutely amazing. And of course, if you use a picture of a person, well, you can get all kinds of neat effects there. So we'll go ahead and get my, my little nephew. And there he is at a walkathon. He is now no longer has leukemia. He's had leukemia for the last two years and I guess it's, they say it's in remission. I think he's five now or six. So we're real happy to have good news for my nephew. But look when you put him in a shape like this. My computer's stuck. And we get his face in there. You know, the kaleidoscopes that it makes is now going to have his face repeated over and over again. You can resize to make him fit. So there's my nephew, Kai kind of in a kaleidoscope. There's his little face and you can see it looks like it's looking at each other up there in the kaleidoscope. So it's just totally, totally cool. I'm very, very impressed um, with how that works. So let's see if we can stop that crazy effect. So we're all done. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, come find me on Facebook. Um, find me on my website, createandcraft.com. Let's see if I can throw that up. That would be another miracle, Tammy. Yes, there it worked. Woo! So, I'm so happy. <laughs> so find me at www.createandcraft.com or look on Facebook for www or for Create and Craft. You'll find it there. And it looks like we have a ton of viewers tonight. I really appreciate that. I appreciate your patience with all the glitches with the cameras. But I hope you have a good idea of what the Zing can do. I truly do think it's amazing. I apologize my website is down. But don't go buy it from somebody else. You better wait till my website comes back and I'll give you free shipping. Thing, and I'm the guy you're going to call for support. I don't know if that makes you feel good or nervous. <laughs> I don't know about that. Tammy, if you had to call me for support, would you feel good or bad? I think you're amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> <though>. <laughs>
<laughs> it's funny because last week she said I couldn't help anybody with their zings till I finished my PK Glitz post. That was critical. <laughs> <laughs> but I got it done, so now I can help you. So I'm going to end the broadcast, everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks, Tammy, for all your help and moral support. Have a 